It never occurred to me that you would keep the appointment. He's my son. I took it out of my calendar. I see. I didn't think you... Well, I did. I didn't think you'd still want to talk about... About my son? <laughs> that it might be too painful to... Yes to talk about him so soon after his death. Well, we had an appointment. You sent a note home with my son? Yes. You suspended him? Five days? Yes. He was fighting with another boy? No. He came home bruised with dried blood on his mouth? I don't know anything about that. That must have happened after he left school. Was he... Was he beat up a lot? Picked on? I never saw that happen. But the day he was suspended, he was beat up. You didn't know. I'm not surprised. You're not. I was. He made some of the children angry. And you. He made you angry. Yes. This isn't what I expected. That was very honest. He made you angry. Okay. This is nice, your room, colorful. Thank you. It's warm. Thank you. I envisioned a barren tomb. <laughs> Painted prison green. Desks in depressing rows. Hard tile flooring that your heels made ominous clicking noises against as you paced up and down the rows, stroking the black chin hairs on warts covering your thick. <laughs> Bovine neck. Mm. <laughs> a lovingly framed portrait of Stalin at the front of the room for children to genuflect to as they file in. I sent it out to be cleaned. <laughs> That's funny. You surprise me. <laughs> what did you imagine I was like? You must have little mental images of all the parents, what they're like. Do I surprise you? I knew you were a single mother. How? A writing project I gave. I asked them to describe their father. They had nothing to write about. He wrote about his grandfather instead. He never knew either grandfather. He made it up. No. He wrote about what he imagined his grandfather's corpse was like. Buried in the earth. Well, that's original. <laughs> I bet you never had a paper like it in all your two years of teaching. <laughs> no. So when you began to hate him? I didn't hate him. Come on. I didn't hate him. Honestly? I did not. 
hate him. Liar. Miss Fell, I think you should leave. It's all right. I'm not angry about it, for Christ's sake. I don't like everyone I meet or everyone I know. I freely hate some of them. It isn't their fault, it just happens that way. I'm sure Gideon was the same. I'm sure you are the same. I don't think this is accomplishing anything. And in return, I don't expect everyone I meet to like me. I hated some of my teachers. My fifth grade teacher, in fact. It's too soon for this. I feel certain she hated me too. Let's reschedule for a time when the principal and the school counselor can join us. I don't expect you to like each and every one of your students. That would be inhuman. I'll walk you to your car. He hated you! It just happens sometimes. You should take some time to grieve before this. We should all take some time. What did you mean when you said we should reschedule for a time when the principal could join us? Is the principal not able to join us? I'm sure she thought that you wouldn't feel up to this discussion at this time. Or that it no longer mattered? That it might be in poor taste. That this conversation no longer mattered? That it wasn't the priority at the moment. Your grief is the priority. We had an appointment, and no one canceled it. You didn't cancel it. I would appreciate it if the principal would join us. Please. She's taking a personal day. Excuse me? She's taking a personal day today. That's what I thought you said. She took the news about your son very hard. <laughs> okay. Get her in here. Call her at home. I'll talk to Carol. Just like Gordian and Lockwood. Carol spoke with her. She says she's on her way. Where does she live? Not far, 15 minutes. 
Good. I'll wait. Do you have that paper? The one that Gideon wrote about his grandfather? I saw some of them posted on the wall, but not his. I gave them back their papers, except for the ones I posted. Oh. He didn't bring it home? I don't know if he did. Go check his book bag. I'll do that. Or his locker. Where is it? We'll call the facilities manager. He can take you to Gideon's locker and cut off the lock. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Or it might be here in his desk if he didn't bring it home. Which is his desk? You're sitting in here. This? This is, uh, I assigned them the seat they sit in on the first day of class. You see it a lot at open house. Parents come in and sit at the same seat. Oh, <laughs> how strange. Mm. this one. Who is Seneca? She's a girl in my class. She sits behind Gideon. She passes some notes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> she uses her phone and texts people the rest of the time. Gideon didn't have a phone. <laughs> I guess she had to do it old school. She did this. Mm. This is nice. I like this. I did too. Good topic. Yeah. Who names their daughter Seneca? That's almost <laughs> as bad as Gideon. No wonder she liked him. She did like him? Yeah. Did she have a crush on him? I think she did. <laughs> girl named Seneca sat behind Gideon and had a crush on him. She passed him notes because she couldn't text him. <laughs> How wonderful. <laughs> this says, Jake's a pee hole. He's lying like a pee hole. Lying. All caps. Don't get mad. That's what he wants. I believe you that he did it. I always believe you, not that dick snot. <laughs> you, all caps. She expresses herself well, very clearly. 
like her. She reminds me of me. They say boys always look for their mother and a maid. What did she look like? <clears throat> she dyes her hair platinum blonde and wears false eyelashes and a stuffed bra. She has a nose ring. She's a lemon. Yes. Wow. Wow. Did her parents have a parent-teacher conference at some point, too? No. <laughs> really? Okay. He, lucky me, I guess. Mm. Who is Jake? <clears throat> He's a boy in the sixth grade. Is he one of the children that Gideon made angry on Friday, the day he died? There's a Jake on Facebook who left comments on Gideon's Facebook page over the weekend saying, you're a faggot and you're a lying faggot. After Gideon was dead, in fact, so untimely. He couldn't have known Gideon was dead. The kids didn't know until this morning. Oh, well then. It's not an excuse. No, it's not. Jake's been troubled lately. It's out of character if he did that. You like Jake. He's one that you like. He's a good boy. Who has had a difficult year. What did he think Gideon was lying about? We should wait for the principal. All right. My grandfather's hands are brown apple cores, buried in dirt like seeds. He used to take me hunting for ravens on a lake and put handfuls of candy corn in my pockets when I wasn't looking. His teeth twisted in his mouth when he smiled, and now they have fallen out and his jawbone smiles empty. We miss the smell of his cigars around the house sometimes. He never met his grandfather. A plus. Yes. Good grade. But you didn't post it on the wall? No. Too depressing? I can't post everything that's good. So. It has a hole in the corner. From a thumbtack? A little hole here in the corner like the papers that are posted. It was posted once, you took it down. I rotate the papers that are posted on the walls, take some down on Fridays, put more up. When did you take it down? I don't remember. Okay. Can I get you something to drink? No, thank you. I'm fine. Just let me know. Yes, I will. Oral hygienist? I'm sorry? Truck stop waitress? I'm trying to guess what you imagined I was like. <laughs> I didn't really. After I didn't come to open house? There are lots of parents who can't make it. Tattoo artist? Horse wrangler? No. What did you think? I had no idea. You must have formed an idea. From Gideon, an impression of, of what his mother was like. You can't ever predict. Stripper. Mm. 
come on, you thought about it. You didn't before. You did after you heard what happened. I thought you might have a job that required overtime, I guess. Okay. Or that made a lot of demands on your time. A doctor? Lawyer? I Something suppose. important. <laughs> Rocket scientist. Maybe a labor organizer trying to unionize in Walmart. Mm, I didn't have anything to form an impression around. Do you want to know what I do? Of course. Yes, I can see you're eaten alive by curiosity. I don't think your personal life or your son's is any of my business. What do you care? I just don't want to be intrusive. <sighs> what do you do for a living? The laugh. I doubt it. No, you will. You won't see this coming. Any guesses? No. Oh, guess. Guess one. One guess. Accounting. Accounting? God, no accounting. Why on earth are you... I don't know. It came to mind. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Gideon wasn't any good at math. What gave you the idea? I'm not good at guessing games. Oh, counting. What do you do then? <laughs> you won't see this coming. All right. Wait for it. Mm -hmm. Wait for it. I'm a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Mm, that's terrific. What do you teach? Literature. Where? At Northwestern, in the graduate department. You're a professor. That's different than a teacher? That's a different kind of teacher. All right. What sort of literature? Poetry. Medieval, mm -hmm. an earlier form. Go, thou first of my bards. Take the spear of Fingo, fix a plane to its point. Shake it to the winds of heaven and bid him in songs to advance and leave the rolling of his wave. Tell to Karos that I long for battle, that my bow is weary of the chase of Kona. Tell him the mighty are not here and that my arm is young. <sighs> <laughs> It's very martial. <laughs> they all are. Fighting and fucking, that's all anybody really writes about. <laughs> <sighs> that was part of an Austrian poem. The War of Karos. Probably not authentic. In the 18th and 19th centuries, it was fashionable for a while to write poetry in the style of ancient Scots Gaelic and pass it off as a genuine work of antiquity. Hmm. Makes the job for modern scholars a real bitch. A lot of what we do is to search for something authentic in a field of bullshit. Hmm. Only search. Sounds like a very specialized discipline. Yeah. Very fascinating. Really? Mm. You're as much of an archaeologist as you are a literary critic. Perhaps. <laughs> it must be a whole world onto itself. Oh, yes. <laughs> a place you could get lost in. Disappear into. What was your major in college? Marketing. Did you get a master's degree? I have an MBA and I went back and got my master's in education. Two years ago. Mm-hmm. Well, 
Something must really have gone wrong at that advertising job to prompt that. All that time and money spent on the marketing degree and the MBA just to throw it all away for this. Okay. Did you turn 40 and have a midlife crisis? Men get hair implants, sports cars, and new 20-year-old girlfriends. We just make bad choices. Fifteen minutes about that. Wow. If she hits all green lights, she ought to be here to rescue you soon. Wouldn't put it that way. No. You seem very careful. I would really hate to start without her. I know you would really hate to start without her, too. I guess you feel you need backup. No, I think she wants very much to be here. We're interrupting her personal day. I'd like to give her that opportunity. She might be out golfing or something. Does she golf? If the situation were reversed and I wasn't here, I hope she would give me the chance to get here before she discussed this with you. You want to get your stories straight? No, to give you a complete picture. At this point, a fragment of a picture would be fine, Ms. Clark. <laughs> Do you have a first name? Heather. That's pretty. Thank you. Is she coming? Carol called her. <clears throat> I'm sure she's coming. You could wait in her office if you'd prefer. Nice try. Mm. Could something be delaying her? I'm sure she's on her way. All right. You're being watched by the gods. Zeus, Shiva, Vishnu, Ganesh, Hermes. I thought our forefathers died for separation of church and state in this country. You let the gods into your classroom. We're learning about mythology. Do your Hindu students think of it as mythology? <laughs> we don't have any. We do have a Greek boy, but he's Greek Orthodox. <laughs> <laughs> Do you personally believe in any of them? No. I believe in Shiva. I don't think I could have the eyes of the gods on me all day. Are you planning on marrying? No. You want to make it a half day that day, give the children and their parents an opportunity to attend. All right. We had an assembly this morning. A crisis management counselor spoke to the children, and we told them to speak to someone if they think they need private counseling. Was Seneca upset? No. Did she ask for private counseling? No. Well, she wouldn't. Dyed hair, nose ring, padded bra. She wouldn't. She's tough. Probably has an image to maintain. I spoke to her. Individually? That was nice of you. We're going to send a note to all the parents on warning signs to watch out for. Maybe her parents will get her counseling. What did she say? 
when you spoke to her. Did she miss Tim? Was Jake upset? All of the children are upset. They're making new cards. The children, sympathy cards. All of them? We wanted to help them express their feelings. <laughs> what is that, 180 cards? And you said how many? 220. 220 sympathy cards? Yes. My money? Where would I put them all? Thanks. <laughs> the principal will be collecting them. No, you collect them, Heather. You collect them for me. All right. Good. I can bring them to the memorial. I don't want you at the memorial. Here, go ahead and collect the cards. Do that. Collect them and then take them home and burn them in a trash can. Outside, if you think that would drive your smoke detector crazy. I don't want them. I don't want to even look at them. Jesus Christ. You... you don't have to tell the children that you bring them. Tell the children I love them. I wallpapered Gideon's empty room with them. They've really eased my burden and brought me closer to the god Shiva or something. Ask the crisis management counselor what to say. Except Seneca's card, you can mail me that one. Okay. I don't want to see the others. Okay. Seneca seems all right. She seems perceptive. Is she? She's sensitive. Not perceptive? What side did she come down on? In her Gordian Knot report? Cut it or figure it out? Figure it out, right? It wasn't part of the assignment to take a side. Oh. Okay. Jake's a pee hole. He's lying like a pee hole. Jake's become an easy target lately. Well, what was he lying about? I'm not sure. I can't make that note fit with anything I know of. Why not? It's the reverse of what I would have expected. You think Gideon was lying like a pee hole? I would have expected Gideon to be accused of lying or of spreading rumors. And that's what this is about? Something he said to this Jake? It's not that simple. Or there's some sort of fight between them. That's what this is about. When the principal gets here, Ms. Fell, I promise Gideon you started it? I will answer, but until she gets what here, did Gideon I don't say feel that about I have... Jake the pee hole that got him suspended. We're waiting for the principal. Yeah. I prefer that. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to balance Jake's right to privacy. I think I've been here almost half an hour. Have I? My perception of time is shot to hell. I lose several hours in what feels like minutes and I get lost in minutes for what feels like hours. Have I been here for half an hour? I came in here with a simple question. What the hell happened? I thought this would largely be a transactional exchange. I ask, you give. Even, well, correct me if I'm wrong, you have two years of professional experience, but even if the circumstances around my son's suspension weren't charged, let's say, by the fact of his death, 
I would expect the reasons for his suspension to have at least come up in the first half hour of conversation. I don't know what happened. I've been sitting here playing guessing games with you. Has it been half an hour? You'd know. You've been looking at your cell phone and you think I'm not looking at you. Am I interrupting something? Are you waiting for a call? If it's something important, by all means. I'm sorry. I don't want to wait for the principal. I don't think she's coming. What is it? What got Gideon suspended? It's something Gideon wrote. About Jake? It doesn't matter who it's about. Okay, wait. Don't get mad. That's what he wants. I believe you that he did it. I always believe you, not that Dick's not. I believe you that he did it. Wait, wait. Gideon said that Jake wrote this, and Seneca believes him. No. Seneca thinks Jake wrote this. No, she doesn't. How do you know? It's in his handwriting. His handwriting. He admitted that he wrote it. His handwriting. He wrote this. He typed his schoolwork. He wrote. He had a computer. He wrote this. I don't know what Seneca is talking about in her note. Not this. What is it? A story. A story? Yes. You've got to be kidding me. A story? You suspended my son over a story? I'm going to leave this with you. I'm going to step outside and let you read it in private. No, you will not. I think I should. No. I think you'll want to process things without me here. It's disturbing. I have a feeling there are miles between what you and I find disturbing. Read it and we'll see. Don't. I want you to explain things to me. I don't want to sit alone here. I didn't come here for that. I don't want to figure things out. I want them explained. I want you to read it to me. I'm not going to do that. Yes. I don't intend to read it again. You will with me. It's not the way you want your son remembered. You don't know what I want. Trust me. <sighs> read it. You can read it yourself. I'm sorry, I honestly can't read that again. And certainly not out loud. As bad as all that? Yes! As bad as facing what you did? That's not fair. That is not fair! Read it to me. I can't do that. Please read it to me. I know you're angry with me. 
I can't imagine how angry you must be with me and you want to punish me. I'm not going to. I'm very sorry. I don't think I could form the words. It offends me. I want you to. My whole heart goes out to you. But you don't have the right to make me do something like that. Do something unpleasant. You don't have you the to. high ground here. I need you to. I don't know what went on in your house. <laughs> okay. Once he left this classroom, my responsibility ended. This, this is not a product of my classroom. I can't read it. He learned it in your house. I can't read it. Oh, as bad as all that, as facing what you did. I need you to do this because it's in his handwriting and I can't read his handwriting without seeing his suicide note in my hands. It began during a war, as things do. We all formed tribes and began killing the teachers. I cut Mr. Sean apart myself with a hunting knife my grandfather gave me the last time he took me hunting ravens. We needed his entrails for our weavers and our poets. I think Mr. Sean was grateful. A group of sixth graders had caught him in the cafeteria earlier by the vending machines and cut out his eyes flayed him and raped him with the clubs they had fashioned by cutting the dicks off their fathers and stretching the skin over thick poles. He was spitting blood up because of something they'd broken in him, and I think he loved me for cutting him open. I took a broomstick out of the janitor's closet and nailed one end of his intestines to it and then rolled the rest of his intestines out of his stomach, twisting them around the broomstick. They stretched more than 25 feet when I was done. Mr. Sean had told me that intestines were that long in science class a month ago, but I didn't believe him until we started collecting them for the weavers and the poets. He was lucky. Most kids wouldn't have killed him first. I put the thick roll of Mr. Sean's intestines over my shoulder and started walking to the gym, which is the room where we kept the weavers. The boys were raping them. The girls were slowly slicing away their nipples with vegetable peelers they'd won in the great cafeteria war against the lunch ladies. These kids didn't want anything more than this. They didn't care about the weavers or poets. So they left the teachers raped and scarred and blind, but didn't take their entrails. So I killed Miss Lobos and Miss Harris and rolled their entrails onto the broomstick with Mr. Sean's. It was harder with Miss Clark. They left her one eye and she was watching me. 
She was naked and they'd taken her nipples, her tongue, and she was so ripped apart down there it looked like dogs had been at her and not just kids. But I really needed her entrails, more than she did at this point, so I put my knife in her remaining eye and twisted it into her brain. And I rolled her entrails up with the rest. Around the corner in the hall outside the nurse's office, the nurse, Carol from the office, and the fat principal were hanging from the walls by nails punched through their wrists and ankles and knees and shoulders. Their bodies were just gaping empty bags, no entrails to salvage. And then I saw Jake Powell, Jake's tribe and their first grade slaves. That was the truly sick thing. Jake was raping the same first grade kid he had been raping even before the war began. You all already knew about that. This dumb little kid with glasses, Jake used to have to sneak around about it, but with the teachers dead or dying, he could do what he pleased. I watched him torture his first grade slaves for a while. He maimed and raped and bled and squeezed and screamed and sucked and chewed and twisted. Even before the war, Jake was wrong. When the weavers give me my cloak, maybe I can do something about him. The broomstick was heavy and I had enough guts, so I made my way to the gym where the weavers worked. Since the weavers started working, the gym stopped smelling like a gym and started smelling like a butcher shop and a toilet. All those entrails being braided and woven. You wondered how the weavers could stand it, but when they changed into weavers, maybe they lost their sense of smell. We had been in home period in Miss Clark's room when the first weaver was chosen. We don't know by who, some think there are aliens on Earth, like the body snatchers, and some think God did it. But whoever did it, in the middle of class, this girl suddenly screamed and her eyes turned into balls of blue glass and her arms stretched out like poles and her hands grew new fingers and grew big. This was happening in other classes, but we didn't know that. And she started asking for entrails. Not to eat, but to make things with. So we put her and the others in the gym, and they started making rooms out of the janitor supplies, and we started killing for them. And we had to give the weavers what they needed. Some of us sort of hung back to see what the weavers were making from the teacher's entrails before we started killing and gutting. When the first cloak was made and the first poet climbed the hill, I knew I had to kill however many teachers I needed to so that I could have one. I gave the weaver my last pile of entrails and she tied them onto the ends of the other entrails I had brought her and started weaving. The cloth the weavers make from the teacher's entrails is like nothing you've ever seen. It's like a river and a taste of salt. It's like an ocean with fish moving through black water. When the weaver finished my gut cloak, she put it around my shoulders, and I felt the pool. And I walked out of the building to the soccer field where the tribes who kept the first and third grade kids as slaves had made them build a mountain. And I climbed the mountain and joined the poets there. We watch the war, and we write about the great deeds done, or the horrors done. And that is how God remembers you, the way we write you, and no other way. He was passing it around to the other students. It's my responsibility to. I'm sure you understand. I'm sure you understand now. I don't know what it must be like to listen to this. I can't imagine, though. I don't think at heart that he 
this hard to stomach. I know, I know. Believe this, me. This is... I know this wasn't all there no, was to this is... him. I know he was. This is a... magnificent. This is wonderful writing. Strong. Fearless. Fierce. Brave. Cool. Remarkable. This is a wonderful story about art and its purpose, about man and divine judgment. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's beautiful. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. How can you heal him? How could you? It's beautiful. I disagree. Why? I have a responsibility to my students to protect them. From what? From things like this. Damaging things. Poetry. Hate-filled, poisonous attacks. Oh, God. <sighs> he passed this around to a room full of children. What do you think children are? I know what they are. I work with them, for them, every day. All right. What are they? Fragile. fragile. Bullshit. Children are not fragile. They're stronger than any of us. It's not true. Yes, it is true. You want children to be something they aren't. Protected. Innocent. That <laughs> is some ridiculous Victorian era idea that we've been hearing mm. about childhood. That it's sacred, that children are innocent and pure, and that they want to be that way, to I stay that way. I don't think it's ridiculous. Childhood is not a suspended state of innocence. It is the condition of rapidly you losing innocence. You asked what I expected you'd be like. You can't stop that this. from happening. You shouldn't want to. This. Am I wrong? Yes. I put him here into a pit full of the unenlightened, into the hands of the conventional. An inability to accept responsibility is what I expected. Have you ever heard of the Marquis de Sade? I don't see the relevance. Have you heard of him? We don't teach him here. Yes, but surely you've heard of him. I've heard of him. Was he a genius? <laughs> ah, I don't think your son was a tortured genius, Ms. Fell. He's been studied for hundreds of years. I think that something was wrong in his life. He's in libraries, except where they are censored by people with limited imaginations. Hmm. Maybe he had been hurt. Who the hell are you to tell my son what not to write about? His teacher. What were you teaching him? How to disappear into some mold you wanted him to pour into? This decision wasn't about him. It was about the other children, their well-being. Have you read the Marquis de Sade? Why? That's probably a yes. God. Did you enjoy it? This is a fifth grade classroom. This is a small box, full of smaller boxes, one of which you tried to keep my son in. And when he couldn't fit inside it, he shot himself in the head over not fitting in a box, cut to your dimensions. The Marquis de Sade is gonna be in libraries and studied and marveled over for centuries after you are a dead, forgotten fifth grade teacher who failed to make a go at advertising. He was a beautiful writer. 
I don't share your appreciation for the Marquis de Sade. No. My son. Gideon was a beautiful writer. He wanted to be a writer. He was going to be one. Jake Wright to first grader. No. Gideon thought Jake Wright to first grader. He did not. That's what he wrote. No, he did not. That's absolutely. Was Jake accused of anything? That's not the point. Not the point. This. No matter what this was about, it was in itself enough to justify a suspension. But is it true? No. Jake was never accused. Jake is the victim here. What your son did to Raping Jake. Raping a first grader? Don't. Just don't. It's a simple Can't question. discuss it with you. Jake's just an easy target lately. Don't get mad. That's what he wants. I believe you that he did it. I always believe you. Not that dick snot. Don't get mad. That's what he wants. Jake wanted to make Gideon mad. Faggot, revenge, he read this. He beat Gideon up. This isn't his fault. I know that. But was Gideon right? If he left those messages on Gideon's Facebook page, it had to be the first time he has ever done anything like that. I don't care if he and Gideon fought. I don't care if he raped the entire first grade class. I just want to know if my son was right, if this is what I think it is. I don't care about Jake. You think that I think like you, that I have a cause, that, that this is an opportunity for me to demonstrate my essential human goodness by putting together a PR campaign at my kitchen table to raise awareness about cyberbullying. <laughs> Going on talk shows and bragging about how I'm turning lemons to lemonade by lobbying for legislation to prevent 11-year-olds from typing the word faggot on Facebook. <sighs> he didn't die because of what Jake did or what Jake wrote on his Facebook page. He didn't die because of what he wrote or because you suspended him. He died because he couldn't face telling me about it. God damn it. He could have told me this. I'm not a good mother. There are a million things he could have done and not wanted to tell me. A million things I would have been equipped to hear. I lived in fear of those things. I'm not a good mother. There are so many things that could go wrong. So many ways I could ruin things, but this, this, this was my good mother moment. What happened to me? You could have told me this. I would have told him, this is magnificent. You are a poet. You're perfect. They are wrong. I've got another moment. The one time 
who at one time I would have been the mother he needed. And that was the one he got. I don't know what I did to make him think he couldn't tell me. I'm honest with myself. If I knew, I wouldn't be afraid to tell you. I'm a failure. I just don't know what what. had a boy at school this fall. A first grader. He was troubled. There were things going on at home, things going on with his older brother's soccer coach, things happened. Jake was his math tutor. And he accused Jake of touching him. He kept it quiet. The kids found out? Mm. The being found out? Mm. The boy's parents apologized when he admitted to them that he was lying. Was he lying? Gideon believed Jake did it. No. He loved Jake. They were friends. Gideon was standing up for this, this kid, this little kid. I don't think so. He was. He believed that Jake did it. This was an accusation. Jake spent a lot of time with this younger boy. Right or wrong, he, he thought it was the truth that he had to tell the truth. No. He wanted to tell the truth, yes. Yes, this is based on a story I used to tell him when he was little about the Great Poets' War. Once upon a time, a in the green hills of ancient Gaul, two warring clans met on the battlefield of Ballycreeve. Each clan had a master poet and a poet's apprentice so they could see. Because men aren't afraid of dying. They're afraid of not being remembered. No. No. That's not what I meant. He liked Jake. Yes. Jake beat him up, called him a faggot. Before that. He liked him? Yeah. Liked him? Yeah. You think... Angry? Jealous? Jealous of the first grader that he thought Jake had raped. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Poor Seneca. <laughs> okay. Sometimes there are situations in life when you want to do something very much, but you just can't. No, there are 
situations where you don't do what you want. That's all. 15 minutes. She said she was coming. Yeah. She's alive. Why isn't she coming? She talked to the school superintendent and we told her not to talk to him. And without the school board's attorney present. <laughs> They're worried about you suing the school district. Do I have a case? supposed to be talking to me? Let's see. She's a coward. Yes. You're not. Whatever else you are, you're not a coward. Or a liar. Which is surprising, given your background in advertising. <laughs> <laughs> Are you married? No. No kids? No. You live alone? Yes. You have a cat? There's a picture on your desk. Oh God, oh God, hey, 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 it, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. It's, it, no, it's all right, it's all right. It, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's gonna be all right, right? It's, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's just, it's okay. Okay, I'm all right. That. Oh God. <laughs> Your cat's sick. You waiting for a call from the vet? Is she gonna be okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh God. I'm sorry. But Jesus. How much more depressing is this conversation going to get? Your cat is dying. I'm sorry. What's wrong with her? Diabetes. <laughs> she won't get better? <laughs> well, they're going to call me. But she isn't going to get better. He. He. They're going to call. The vet's going to call you and what, you're going to go down there? Put your cat to sleep? Well, this is bad timing, huh? <laughs> you been through this before? Other pets? Well... It's never easy. It won't be. I don't think I... I don't think... I 
done it three times. It's hard. Two dogs and a cat. Now, no more pets. How long did you have him? Fifteen years. I had a long life for a cat. What happened? Was he just prone to diabetes? Did you feed him? Sign this. You're supposed to sign it when we've had our parent-teacher conference. Part of the bureaucratic machinery of school suspension. The form you need for his file, I guess. Principal needs to sign it too, to confirm that we chatted. Don't know what we'll do about her signature. Write the word coward in the blank. You sent this home with him. I'm supposed to meet you and get it signed. Unless it is no longer important. I was grading papers when he gave it to me. I knew it was something big. He couldn't look at me. He was shaking. He gave it to me and I looked at it. I saw what it was and I told him everything would be all right. I asked him if he wanted to talk about it. He had blood on his nose. Someone had hit him in the nose. Jake, probably. Jake, who he liked at one time, I guess. He shook his head now. He, he pulled away when I tried to wipe the blood away. He went up to his room. Called after him after. I called after him telling him everything was all right and I would take care of this. I called the office. Carol, I made this appointment. I didn't hear him go to the garage. I called him to come down for dinner. He didn't answer, so I started up the stairs to go get him. And I heard the gunshot. I thought he was upstairs still, and I, I couldn't imagine. But I called out again and told him to stay in his room, and then I went to the garage. He had taken garbage bags, the ones for gathering dead leaves, and taped them in a rectangle on the floor like a tarp. But he didn't understand because he, he put the gun under his chin, so nothing, nothing landed on the tarp. So he didn't leave behind the tidy mess. He thought he would. He left a note. I'm glad to stand with him. was honest. <laughs> you don't say that to someone when someone tells you that her child's suicide note says you aren't supposed to say that's beautiful. It really isn't appropriate. 
<laughs> but you said it. Because you felt it. Thank you. <sighs> Do you have someone to go with you? The cat. No. I'm not offering. <laughs> Just asking. They said I don't have to be there if it turns out that I need to be there. Can you just give them permission to do it? And not just... I have to. Yes, you do. You have to. He was your cat. Come on, you're tough, right? You, you have to. He's your cat. You you do it. Do it. Do it. He's your cat. You talk to him while they kill him. Talk to him and tell him you love him. Sing him his favorite songs. Put his stuffed toy in his paws and then watch them do it to him. It's your job, Kevin. Watch. Watch his eyes. That's how you'll know. It's time you won't be able to breathe from watching his eyes and waiting for them to turn glassy. And even if he doesn't know, you're there with him, you'll know. You overfed him, damn it. It is your fault. Your fault. You need to be there. You put out the damn cat food, and now your cat became an ocean. And the vet can't catch it in the cup he's holding out. You have to be there to catch the rest of it. The whole ocean and the fish of it cold and black and the way he's gonna die. Wave after wave of that ocean until he's gone. It all matters until he's gone. Every second of it. Or you'll always regret it. Okay. Okay. Good. Tell the principal I was sorry I missed her. Give her that form. If you have someone to cut the lock off of Gideon's locker, have someone bring his things to my house and leave them on the porch. I blame you for this. <laughs>